All right. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Dream Bounds. I'm a little bit intimidated by this episode, actually, um, based on the things that happened last episode. I'm scared, but let's hop in and see what happens next. The night, which passed, was a cheerful one, devoid of any incidents. Part of Kane had worried, while setting this up with August on the sly, that Noah's parents might get wind of what was going on, only a few feet away from their own house. Nightmare visions had weighed on him, of Noah's parents banging down the door of August's home and demanding that their son be relinquished post-haste from this den of depravity. But the hours wore on, and as they did, there came no furious hammering of knuckles on the door. Noah's phone did not even buzz. It seemed that his parents had bought Cain's excuses, after all. That was a relief, one which allowed Cain to finally relax. Are we in Cain's point of view now? What is this? He had been feeling tense all night, mostly on Noah's behalf, but on his own, too. If Noah's parents knew that he had played a part in deceiving them, it seemed unlikely that they would let Cain spend time with Noah again. Cain was putting his own neck on the line, too. Though he stood to lose less, granted, Noah did. Noah, however, seemed to not be thinking about his parents at all. Perhaps he wanted a break from them in their incessant nagging. He deserved as much, given how much shit they put him through on a daily basis. It was better for Noah to relax, to play video games with him in August, and eat the pizza which Noah's father had brought to them. Noah's father had brought to them? Interesting. Too much stress would only make him sick. Hey, August, I was just thinking. Noah sat down a slice of pizza, his fingertips damp with grease, and looked at August, wonderingly. It's kind of crazy how your dad's alright with all this. Letting us stay up late, I mean, and even bringing us a pizza. My parents would never let me stay up past midnight on a school night. He seems really chill, though, and he doesn't talk to you like a parent, either. Don't you think so? He doesn't talk like my parents, at least. They're always lecturing me, but your dad... It's... hard to explain, but it feels like he talks to you like an equal. Well, my dad trusts me. He knows he doesn't have to order me around. He says I have a decent enough head on my shoulders to make my own decisions. Though I wonder if he has a bit too much faith in me. I don't think so. He's like... If I could choose how my parents were, I like it if they could act more like your dad. He's so cool. He's amazing, isn't he? August responded with a genial smile, one which would have made half the girls at school swoon. He's... Everything I aspire to be. Thought my parents were laid back. My father being absent for most of my life counts as being laid back. But your dad is way chiller. He really is. I'm so jealous. Wish I could say the same about my family. Noah. August looked at Noah, his eyes widening behind his glasses. August hadn't known Noah for as long as Cain had, and hadn't heard all the horror stories Noah had shared about his parents, but he must have had a decent grasp on how they acted. It was hard not to see how controlling they were, even for a relative newcomer like August. August's fair face filled, momentarily, with sympathy, before he reached out, then wound his arms around Cain and Noah's shoulders, pulling them both to him. I know you've been through a lot, but it's all right. We can always be your family. That's so cute. Isn't that right, Cain? Family? Cain felt his face flush at this. He hadn't expected the close proximity. It was unexpected. Noah was the one who had a thing for August, not him, but August's touch, not to mention the softness of his hair as it brushed against Cain's cheek, made him start. Perhaps it was no wonder Noah had fallen for August. Like his father, he was very likable. Maybe it ran in the family. <laughs> Only I could be so lucky. 
I'm not opposed to that, I guess. But how would that work, exactly? Well, gee. August smiled bashfully. I guess I just said it because it sounded cool. But I'd not given too much thought about our exact roles. You'd definitely be the mother, though. Huh? You're being serious? Of course. You're the best at cooking out of all of us, and you're always lecturing us. My grades would probably be even worse if you weren't around to keep me on the straight and narrow. Huh. Kane frowned. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Feels like you're calling me a nag. In the best possible way. Not so sure about that. But whatever. I guess I'll take it. I don't mind being the mom friend. But what about you, August? Naturally, I'll be Noah's younger brother. <laughs> You don't want to be the father? <laughs> I think I'm too young to start a family. Right. That makes sense. Hey, I could say the same thing about myself. I might be taller than you, but I'm not any older. <laughs> August dissolved into giggles in the face of Kane's protests. Giggles which proved to be infectious, because Kane found himself chuckling too. Man. What are we talking about, anyway? This is so stupid. Maybe, but it's good to be stupid sometimes. Life's serious enough as it is. What do you think, Noah? Noah, who had been quiet during this exchange, looked between August and Kane. He blinked. Then, with eyes which looked suspiciously moist, he said, You guys... I... I... Kane drew away from Noah, as did August. He expected Noah to laugh, maybe, at their antics, and tell them they were being silly, that he already had a brother and he didn't want another. That, or he had thought Noah might roll his eyes at the silliness of it all. He hadn't thought Noah would cry. But that was exactly what was happening. Is this because I said I wouldn't mind being your brother? Do you so hate the thought of... Being related to me that much? No, it's just... It's... Silly, but... I was just thinking. I was feeling pretty shitty, but you guys... You're the best. A few more tears trickled down Noah's cheeks. Self-consciously, he scrubbed them away. His face flushed. God, I must be tired or something. Please pretend that never happened. <laughs> well. Kane smiled, searching for a way to diffuse the tension. I guess I can take see Noah crying off my bucket list. Shut up. Noah's response was so surly it made Kane chuckle. August, however, was beginning to look emotional himself. He glanced between Kane and Noah, though his gaze lingered on Noah for longer. I don't want to steal the spotlight, but I also appreciate you two. I mean, I've moved around so much because of my father's work that, well, you're the first real friends I've ever had. August. Kane saw how Noah's eyes widened, could see beneath his expression the way his heart tightened and frowned. Kane didn't begrudge Noah's feelings for August, but hold on, I just had a terrible thought. Kane. You know what? We're just going to continue on. We're going to pretend I didn't have that thought, but. Hmm. Damn, he really is obvious. Kane cleared his throat, then hastened to change the subject. August had decided to bequeath him the title of the mom friend, and it was a title he meant to make the most of. Okay, everyone is overtired, I think. Why don't we get ready for bed? The suggestion was met with unanimous agreement. Perhaps Noah was still self-conscious about the way he had cried, because he agreed a little too eagerly. The three boys cleared away the pizza boxes, then got ready for bed. 
August then suggested, once they had changed into their night clothes, that they turn on the TV and watch a movie. Noah sandwiched between them on the mattress. Cain agreed, as did Noah, albeit hesitantly. Cain knew Noah well enough that he must have been inter internally combusting at the thought of spending a night lying next to August. It was remarkable, really, that he was able to keep the blush from his face, for the most part. August must not have seen Noah's embarrassment, but Cain did. He saw all of Noah's tells. He had known Noah long enough to divine the meaning behind even the subtlest of shifts behind his expressions. Noah might have acted curt, but to Cain, he was an open book. The three of them settled down on the mattress to watch the movie. The TV set the only source of light in August's darkened bedroom. Cain kept his eyes trained on the TV, but he was only half paying attention to the movie that was playing on the screen. His mind was occupied instead with thoughts of Noah and of August. He was glad that Noah was in higher spirits, but... The movie came to a close and Cain shifted, turning away from Noah to face the wall. He thought that Noah would probably want some privacy. <laughs> Cain. If he really was the mom friend, then making himself scarce at sentimental moments like this was just another one of his duties. Nobody wanted their mother to hang out around them when they were laying in bed in the dark with a person that they liked. That was just common sense. Cain pretended to sleep, his breathing deep and slow. In actuality, he had never felt less like sleeping in his life. He was oddly uneasy, his stomach twisting into knots. But Cain ignored that. He was rather good at ignoring things which made him uncomfortable. Cain with practice. Cain heard August switch off the TV set, plunging the room into an even greater darkness, one which was all-consuming. Then there was a shifting of sheets, the sound of bodies stirring. Noah and August bade one another good night, and silence reigned. The silence lasted only for a few brief moments, however, when Noah began to toss again. Cain felt the sheets being rumpled around him, and he exhaled. How Noah thought he was asleep was a mystery. Only a catatonic person could have dozed through all of Noah's squirming. It seemed that August, too, couldn't sleep. Still awake? No, um... <laughs> I'm sleeping. Leave me alone. I'm... Not that tired. Me neither. Once more, silence fell. Cain wondered briefly whether that would be the end of that conversation, which seemed to have died a swift death, when... Can I ask you a question? Of course, you can ask me anything. Do you... Um... Uh... What I mean is... What I'm trying to ask is, uh, if you, perhaps... <laughs> so, here it was. Noah was finally going to ask him. Well, it was about time. It had only taken Noah, what, three months to pop the question? It was a wonder he'd not come out with it already. Cain was proud of Noah, in a way, for finally mustering up his courage. But at the same time, he couldn't quell the unpleasant twisting in his stomach when Noah spoke. Like, guys? <laughs> um, hastily, Noah tried to explain himself, his voice higher than usual, and panicked alongside it. I mean, if you did, I'd, I'd be cool with that, and, uh, it has nothing to do, to do with my parents. I was just wondering. Noah's heartfelt query was met immediately with silence. Cain himself listened in, his breath bated. Though wasn't he supposed to be snoring? He wondered briefly whether Noah might realize his deception and come over all embarrassed. But that seemed unlikely. It was painfully obvious that Noah only had eyes for August. Cain might have been sharing the same bed as them, but he could very well have belonged in a different country, a different continent, 
a different universe. Noah would not be thinking about Cain right now. He was only thinking about August. Maybe, came August's reply after a pause. I haven't ever really thought about it. What about you? Yes, what about Noah? <laughs> Cain was quietly confident he already knew this answer, but he listened in regardless, more intently than he had when waiting for August's reply. What? No, no, of course I don't, Noah. I mean, I do? Uh, I... Maybe. I don't know. I... But this was all beginning to become too much for Kane. This conversation was veering into intimate territory. Territory Kane did not think he ought to overhear. He didn't want Noah and August confessing when he was inches away from them, privy to everything that was going on. And perhaps another, less selfless, less mom-like part of him didn't want Noah and August to confess at all. The thought was discomforting, so much so he shifted, very deliberately, and turned over in the bed. Cain didn't say anything, he didn't have to, but this movement was enough to remind Noah and August of his presence. Cain heard Noah suck in a breath of air. Then, he sighed. Well... Never mind. Um, g good night, August. Right. Good night, Noah. Sweet dreams. You too. Kane heard Noah and August shift. They settled down, their eyelids matting together in the dark. Silence filled the room, a deep silence which seemed even more oppressive than the darkness. Then, there was nothing. Both Noah and August must have fallen asleep. It didn't take much longer for the darkness to take Cain, either. Cain was in a curious mood come the following morning. He couldn't stop himself from running Noah and August's late night heart to heart through his head. What would have happened, he wondered, if he hadn't interrupted during that pivotal moment? Would Noah have confessed to August? Would August have confessed to Noah? Find out next time on- No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was obvious that they both liked one another, but did August like Noah like that? Cain didn't know. He should have been cheering Noah on, he knew, if he really was his friend, and yet... Cain's pensive mood didn't lift as he dressed for school that morning, or as he sat in August's kitchen, eating the decadent pancakes. Noah, Noah's dad, again, is the one who's for some reason getting them food. <laughs> in August's house, okay? Let's go, Noah's dad. Not even the harsh sunlight, which beat down on his head when he exited August's home, could clear the cobwebs in his head. Cain walked to school alongside Noah and August his pace ambling, hanging back as they crested the hills. It was a pleasant enough morning, but perhaps it was a bit too pleasant. The sunlight was bright enough to burn. August and Noah, meanwhile, were in curious moods of their own. Neither of them had spoken very much since awaking. Hell, they'd hardly said two sentences to one another after setting off for school, something which was rather unusual. Typically, they never stopped chattering. They must, Cain knew, have been thinking about last night. Well, that makes three of us. Ahem. The silence, however, soon proved to be unbearable. Cain couldn't endure it. If Noah and August were going to act this awkward after their near confession, then he wished he thought to interrupt them sooner. Then this walk to school wouldn't be so excruciating. Hey. Cain forced himself to sound casual when he spoke up, tamping down the guilt which curdled in the pit of his stomach. Did something happen? Both August and Noah, perhaps predictably, started. Furtively, they looked to one another, 
Noah's face a little flushed. Then his voice cracking, Noah said, not at all convincingly, Nothing happened. I'm just a little tired. Right. He knew this was a lie, but he hadn't the heart to contradict either of them. If they didn't want to tell him what had happened, it was fine. It was all fine. Well, we did stay up kinda late. Even my dad doesn't let me do that. And he's hardly ever there. Yeah. The trio continued to walk to school, the sunlight beating down unpleasantly on the tops of their heads. They didn't speak another word during the rest of the journey, and neither did they speak very much when they arrived at class that morning. Noah cracked open his sketchbook and bent down to draw, his gaze laser-like in its concentration. He knew Noah well enough to know there was no point trying to strike up a conversation when he was like that, so he decided to leave well enough alone. Instead, he started to chatter with some of the other boys in the class. It was as good as a way to pass the time as any, and talking to people who weren't Noah or August did help Kane feel decidedly more normal. That's right. I am normal. I'm exceedingly normal. Stop making things not normal, Kane. If you want to hang around Noah, you can't keep acting like a possessive weirdo. Chill out, for fuck's sake. It's not like anything even happened last night, anyway. They didn't even kiss. At least, I don't think they did. Fuck. What would I do if they did kiss? Miss Rose eventually arrived in the classroom, but she didn't start reading out the register, not immediately. Instead, she made her way over to Noah, who was still drawing, and bent down to murmur something to him, okay? Kane didn't catch what she said. He was still busy talking to a couple of his other friends, trying to be normal. But he did wonder. What was that about? Kane didn't have a chance, however, to ask until lunch period, a few hours later. He offered to pick Noah and August some drinks from the vending machine. It was part of his newfound strategy to be more chill and less intensely unbearably weird, which took a couple of minutes. The drinks bought, and Kane's feelings of guilt momentarily alleviated, Kane loped back into the classroom. August had pushed his chair next to Noah's desk, and the two were engaged in conversation, their heads bowed. Hmm. Weren't their heads just a little too close together? They looked awfully cozy. But maybe he was just imagining it. Well, whatever. Kane bounded over to them, then slung an arm around Noah's shoulder, beaming brightly all the while, as though last night hadn't happened. If I keep pretending, it might just work. Who knows? The human mind is an incredible thing. I got some drinks. Did you miss me? <laughs> he shrugged Kane off of him and pouted. About as much as I'd miss any other overgrown, way too full of himself guy with no notion of personal space. Noah's response was a touch was a touchy, but it made Kane smile regardless. It was nice to know that Noah was back to his usual self. All of that silence had been grating. Don't be like that. There's no need for personal space between you and me. Kane laughed, ruffled the top of Noah's hair with his free hand, then set the drinks down on the desk. August thanked him, then nudged Noah excitedly in the side with his elbow. Hey, now that Kane's here, you should tell him too, Noah. Hm? Kane pulled up his own chair to Noah's desk and, after slumping down, he glanced at his two friends curiously. Did something happen? It's... not a big deal, really. Noah replied, red-faced, in a manner which suggested this was quite a big deal, really. Classic Noah. He always downplays his achievements. I wonder if that's a side effect of living with Asher. Miss Rose just wants me to join her art club and go for a scholarship. What? Hey, Noah! Kane pouted and nudged him beneath the table with his foot. Every time you say something isn't a big deal, it always is. 
You need to start bigging yourself up more. Kane's right. You should be proud of yourself. A scholarship sounds like a big deal. I've never been offered one of those before. I don't think I'd be smart enough for something like that. Hey, you too. Noah scowled, looking for all the world like a cat which had been stepped on. You don't need to go on about it so much. It really isn't a big deal, and it's not like I can agree anyway. Why not? I thought you loved art. I do love art, but my parents don't love me loving art. My mother will never let me go along with it. She thinks art is for jobless losers. That sounds very close-minded. I don't know much about art, but I don't think da Vinci or Michelangelo were jobless losers. My parents are weird about this stuff. They don't like anything that doesn't conform to their narrow viewpoints or something. You can say that again. I figured they wouldn't be thrilled about this. That's an understatement. But I can always cover for you. Get this. What if I convinced her to hire me as your tutor? <laughs> then you can say you'll be spending time with me while heading on over to the art club on the sly. It's perfect. It would be perfect. Noah replied sardonically, his arms folded. If I thought my mother would bite. You don't think she'd like the idea? She doesn't like anything I suggest. That's why I should suggest it, not you. She might be swayed by my charms, and she does seem to like me. You're one of the only people she does like. Well, there you go. It's not a lost cause after all. Never say never. Your future is definitely in the arts, Noah. I don't think you should give up on that because of your mother. Though that might be easier said than done. Exactly. Kay nodded, then frowned. Wait, I just remembered. August's birthday is coming up. Didn't I tell Noah I'd help him look for a present? Oh, by the way, are you still good to help me with my homework later today? Oh. Cain saw a flicker of realization cross Noah's face, and he nodded. Yeah, I think I'll drop by the art club and introduce myself first, though. Give me fifteen minutes after school. We can do it then. So you'll be swinging by the art club after all, then? Well, Miss Rose did invite me. It'd be rude to turn her down. And maybe you and August have a point. I shouldn't let my mother dictate everything I do. Good, good. You can be taught. That's character development if I've ever seen it. Oh, shut up. You don't have to sound so smug. I have every right to sound smug. I've been helping you a lot here. At great detriment to myself, I might add. I'm not going to forget that near confession for a while. Yeah, yeah, I know. I get it. Um, thanks, Kane. It's no problem. What are friends for? Speaking of being friends, my dad gave me some money this morning so I can buy you both lunch today from the cafeteria. Oh, you don't need to, but I want to. My dad said it'd be a nice way to thank you for hanging out with me. I've not had any friends over before, so it was special, I guess. I thought I could celebrate it, and we can celebrate your art scholarship too, Noah. You're getting ahead of yourselves. I haven't even gotten the scholarship just yet. Maybe not, but you will. I believe in you. Same here. All right. Thanks. Kane exited the classroom, Noah and August, on his heels. All right, and I think that I'm going to end this episode here for now. I definitely have mixed feelings, I think, about Kane in this episode because I love... How he puts Noah first and is almost dedicated to his role as the mom friend. How he lets Noah have his moment and try to confess his feelings to August. But then also simultaneously, um, you know, the things we kind of found out, the evidence that we found last episode, I'm scared that Cain gets jealous and murders August. Like, I don't know for sure yet. I don't know how August dies, but we do know that August died. And there was 
that notebook in Kane's house. I really hope not, but I'm scared still, you guys. I think I'm forever going to be scared of this game, this route. Kane, I like him so much, but then also simultaneously, what did you do? But I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here for now. It seems as though this specific flashback scene is quite long. Seems as though we're still going to be in it next episode as well. So look forward to that the next time that we play some Dreambound.